Welcome to Thriller Bitcoin. Welcome to Thriller Bitcoin. So it's taking shape as it's coming, uh, but yeah, it it has these like very cinematic elements um, that I'm trying to make people kind of piece it piece it together yeah. themselves, like allow allow like the visceral experience to kind of spell out what it is that's happening here. Do you ever? Uh... Do you ever watch like films and like uh, movies and like stuff like that? Like what's, what's like your inspiration? Yeah. Like where do you get your inspiration from or stuff like yeah, this? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, so when I spent a small period of time in college after the 2008 financial collapse and socialism was in full swing and I was getting loans for college and unemployment. Um, one of the good things that happened from that was my experience in, um, you know, I guess kind of like rigor, rigorous academic life. Uh, so I went to school at the new school. Um, unfortunately I went down, I went down the path of the left for sure. Uh, came out alive though. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, when I was there, I studied, um, some filmmaking, a document and I, and I worked on a, a documentary myself. And then when I got out, uh, I continued making, uh, I actually started a documentary series that I didn't end up finishing. It was about Trenton, New Jersey, uh, which is my home, my home hometown, you know, I'm, I'm from Philadelphia most recently, but I grew up back and forth. Um, but yeah, it was, it was similar to, you know, what I'm, what I'm doing now, except this, this time I'm really, uh, intentional, you know? That's a good word. I like that word. Yeah. Yeah. The last time I saw Slim was in, um, Nashville, I think. And, uh, he just, kept, he gave me one of these. It's just like, <laughs> we're going to catch up. He gave me one of those. <laughs> I think, I think he probably owes a lot of people some conversations. Just, he's just so like, he's so busy. You know what I mean? I barely get to talk to him these days. Uh, in, in, in regards to like community, it's interesting how, like what you're doing over there with slim and, and, and team it's, it's, it's kind of, it's a, uh, it's a different, it's a different shift in, in how we used to do things in the Bitcoin space. Uh, you know, even not even like what, 36 months ago. Uh, but you're seeing these communities sprout up and then they're taking shape and, and it's just getting stronger through the bear market. Like it's not even slowing down, you know? Yeah. I mean, my conviction for, so I, I come to Bitcoin as a non-programmer, right? I'm a non-technical person. I was so just moved. Like, I mean, it, it was, it was shattering. It, it shattered everything that I knew about everything I didn't know about, <laughs> you know, it shattered all of these things. And, um, it really, it made me think about my own work and my relation to people 
in the same kind of perfect rule system, you know? So that like the decentralization thing only works if we all play by the same rules, you know, if we're all agreed on and we're all, you know, I mean, you could take the comparison, the, the, uh, the metaphor to lightning and we all have to have our channels funded, right? Like we have to come with something that works and we all have to do that. And we all have to adhere to these very basic rules. You know, these monetary rules cannot debase, you know, cannot fork and just everybody has to go with it, you know, and that's that's a really beautiful rule for life that was always there, but I didn't really know about, you know, like I didn't I didn't I didn't have it. Um, it was too abstract for me to to see and practice. And then when I saw Bitcoin's level of rigor and, and, and that's what makes it so perfect. And that's what makes it so breathtakingly. I mean, it, it becomes this like spiritual thing. Like how can, how can something be so disciplined? You know what I mean? Basically, (laughs) you know, and, and I just, yeah. So, so that, 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 when you hyper Bitcoinize your life and that's more than that's not going all in on Bitcoin. That's not what that means. You know, that means embracing like embracing the fact that something so pure can exist in the world because before Bitcoin Things were pretty dark, not going to lie, you know, just in, like you in your life, up, just in your life. Are you talking about like in-, in my life, in, in world, in, and I think, cause I hear the story all the time where people's worldview has just shifted, you know, radically. And I really feel that, you know, and I think that's, that's a huge, that's a huge thing to but that shifting is realizing that, you know, that, that light at the other end of the tunnel is not another train. In fact, that's real. Like go to there, you know what I mean? And what a beautiful thing. What a beautiful thing. Yeah, it sure is, man. It's, um, yeah, I remember, I remember myself, like we were just talking about like how life was before Bitcoin, like, I was, I was totally like a, um, just not in a dark place, but just not happy with life, I guess. Like, if that makes any sense, I was just like, kind of like what you would call like a yuppie, like a, like a, you know, spoiled yuppie, I guess. Right. Just like doing my tech job. And now it's like, it's, it's just like hardened and more emboldened and more of a, uh, person that wants to make like fundamental change for the good, you know, um, it's like a higher purpose. It's, um, but that, that's, I think that's what Bitcoin does. It like makes you put a mirror to yourself and, um, makes you clean up the things that, that, um, that it shines a light on. Oh my God. My project files for Bitcoin and the sovereign ranch are, are just like insanity i mean there is just like 600 audio files you know what do you use uh, uh what do you use are you a premiere guy you a final cut guy what do you use yeah yeah so the, like again this is a uh this is all audio series so i'm using um i am using adobe though i'm using adobe audition yeah i love yeah. audition what's your what's dude let's get geeky here let's get some geeky <laughs> audio stuff because i never get to talk about this stuff i mean only with like x frog and like um, I'm trying to think who else I talked to this. Mainly X Frog is the only person I ever talk about the audio stuff. Um, what uh, what uh, what do you uh, what what kind of plugins do you use? What kind of what kind of things do you like? Man, I I don't really like plugins that much. So I really like um, you know I'm your basic compressor limiter 
expander, like the like the basic stuff, you uh-huh. know, just the stuff that that really expands the, the sound and gives it that that fullness. And I'm working with, um, so I I don't unfortunately I don't really have the funds. I came into Bitcoin in 2021. You gotta understand, so I'm not really all the way there yet. I don't have the funds to go around the country and get with all these people in person. So I swear to God, I'm on the phone. I'm recording speaker phone conversations. I mean, and, and I'm sound designing around it, you know? That's a harder thing to do. Most of you don't even realize, man. God. It, it's taken, it's taken, um, it's taken a few tries, you know, to really get, to get what I need. But at the same time, I kind of feel like it's almost like a, it's almost like a scrapbook mm-hmm. of stories. Yeah, you know, and so I, I kind of like that about it. It feels homemade. That's a thing that you. That's a thing that I've kind of. Uh, that's funny you say that. It's funny you say that because like that's a thing that I kind of um, also just. Uh, have come to realize is you can take this really bad audio and this um, these like, you know, like you said, telephone calls, but if you make it into a story, if you make it into like a little audio bookish story, um, like I did the tab conf one and everybody was DMing me like, Oh man, I love how you did that. Like, Oh my God, it was cool. Like how you, can you do that for the next conference that we do? Whatever. I was like, yeah, yeah. Like it was just a lot of fun. I, I literally took me like, an hour to go around the conference and hit everybody up. And then like, it took me like three hours to like edit and put it all together. But at the end of it was a nice little capsule of time, you know, in like the storybook kind of mode for audio. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm also convinced that there is, you know, this oral history thing is something I have been tugging on because I find that that's where truth really lies. And I also find the audio thing to be a very unique way of capturing the truth. And I mean, it really frees you as a storyteller to not be locked to an image because, you know, on this, uh, third episode that's coming out, um, it's about home birth and homeschool and sort of the sovereign way to raise a child. It's, uh, the rise of the heritage woman part two, uh, Ty Jackson from worldview wellness, uh, and Warren from Holy cow beef, BTC Coco. Um, they all contributed deeply to the story and to, you know, I don't, I don't have any kids and, you know, so this is, uh, you know, it's been a really, really just beautiful experience. Um, but, you know, I, I can't, I don't believe that you can really capture that stuff with a camera. Like, come on. I, uh, just for example, there's, you know, we have recordings of Coco and her kids in their home homeschooling you know she's doing the abc's i mean it's it's so beautiful so beautiful and would that have happened with me hanging around with the camera like ooh, oh, oh nah you know you know you know you just remind me of so like when i was doing um when i first started doing thriller bitcoin um you can go back and listen to probably like last year's episodes maybe the year before i forget which maybe it was 2020 2021 or whatever it was but I was doing these kind of like soundscape things where I would, um, I was a big fan of Anthony Bourdain. Did you ever watch Anthony Bourdain? Um, yeah. Yeah. I was a big fan of him. And I always said like, man, I want to create a podcast that is like Anthony Bourdain, but without the, um, without the video. Cause I felt like if you could literally rip the audio from Anthony Bourdain's pod or, vid- or shows, it would be, especially the CNN ones and the, and the, and the travel ones, like you, it would sound like uh, an amazing podcast just cause yeah. like the, the, everything is just like near perfect. How the, the, and the, I, I think even like NPR sucks at this too. Like the, they're not entirely great at it, but like 
you can, but they're always held to like a goat standard, right? As far as like podcasts, like NPR, like the best, but in reality, they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're not, they're not that great. I mean, they're okay, but they just don't have, they have all the shine and the, the, the polish that you need, but they don't have the creativity to like, um, to like, uh, build these landscapes. Right. And, uh, uh, and so like you, you could, you could do it to where like, maybe like you see, you were describing a room where they're doing like ABCs and stuff. And then like, while that's going in the background, you could overdub like them narrating. And then underneath that could be like a, a, a sound soundscape of like a, you know, just music or instrumental. And, and then that just like brushes in slowly, you know? Uh, and like, there's so much you could do with audio where you can create this like audio experience around it. And yeah, man, I, I totally agree. You know, how cool it would be to have a recording of one thing and sort of have some, 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 something sparkling behind it to bring it out or have yeah, like, it. It's almost like brushes, like brush strokes. Like it's like, it's just, a, yep. it's just like a, uh, I see it. Like, do you ever, do you ever do that too? Where you look at like audio as, 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 as a visual thing. Do you do that? Do you see that sometimes? Uh, like yeah, not a visual I, as in yeah. like there's images or anything. It's more like visual as in like, if it's like a, a painting, like Paul Klee used to always talk about that. Paul Klee was a, a German uh, inspired uh, like painter. And he used to talk about how he would, um, he felt that like audio was the, uh, or creating music was like the ultimate uh, form of art. Uh, uh, and, but he, he wasn't very good at it. So he went to become a painter, uh, but um do you, do you look at stuff like that too? When you, when you build these stuff, when you build this stuff? You know, when I'm, when I'm hearing you say that I'm thinking about sound, like I see what you're saying and I feel that in a physical way. Like I, like I get a sense for sound when I, when it hits my ears, like it has a density to it and a lightness to it. And it has like, but it's, it has, it has kind of like a weight thing. I mean, I guess it's kind of like a weight thing on my eardrums, but, but I can kind of visualize it as a mass. Definitely. That's interesting. Yeah. It, it, it reminds me of like those generative art forms that happen, uh, that they make sort of gridded, extended, pulled out, <laughs> warped, okay. you know, yeah, uh, but I was going to say that um, there is this thing that I love that happens in film where it goes to dark, where it goes to black, and or maybe it gets really dark, and it's like this breath from the rest of the light from the film. Mm -hmm. And... There's so much feeling in that space. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there, like the anticipation for what is there, the struggle to see the, the heightened s senses in other areas. And like, that's the part that I think is really special about, you know, that's sort of like where I'm exploring. That's where I'm jumping in the waters with the sound documentary, because I kind of look at it and I, the same, same goes for that Puro signal, which is, you know, a, a lot louder. <laughs> um, but they're kind of like these sci-fi realities, you know, it's like this sci-fi docu news like like kind of opinion piece but all wrapped up in this cinematic sound world with that puro signal that that world is very specifically a sci-fi 80s kind of like hero let's go get them vibe you know yeah um with the bitcoin education wrapped up in it and humor and the memes and but again, that's, that kind of goes back to what you said, like for that Puro signal and, and for Bitcoin and the Sovereign Rancher, um, like for this most recent episode, I took samples from a news clip or nice. whatever, WAB, I don't know where it was that it happened. It doesn't matter. The story was what mattered. But uh, 
I ripped it right out of the video. Boop. Boop. That's what Put I'm talking right. about, man. That's what yeah, I'm talking just, about. You, yeah, you do whatever you have to to make sure the 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 audio story comes to life, right? It's, that your that your message is heard. Mm-hmm. Like this this stuff is out here polluting our space all the time. Yeah. How it's insane to me that we can't use this as material of life. Like this is a natural resource as far as I'm concerned. This uh, this incessant digital media, this is a natural resource. These JPEGs are everybody's. You could just copy and paste it, <laughs> you know, but it's, but that's an important, I don't know. It's, a, it's an important material because you get to start weaving stories and weaving uh, a, a a shift in perspective you get to like shift a perspective and weave the reality that's bit that that you came from into this other place you know and that's right. like the special thing about sampling and yeah. collage sound collage work and document yeah, audio docu series things and yeah i love doing that stuff it's like um i don't even i, I don't even like I don't even get upset about it. Like I, I, I actually enjoy editing audio. Like, so, like I actually enjoy editing audio. I enjoy it. Um, mm-hmm. I love, Me too. I love having free reign to do whatever I want on the audio and creating whatever I want. And um, uh, like this podcast that I do, it's, it's because I just like doing it. It's like, it's not a reason to, um, to keep, you know, for it to like, be something else. I just like, I just enjoy editing audio and it's something (laughs) that I I was, I was going to do anyway, but, um, it's, uh, it's interesting because like you can, you can create like really amazing things with audio. Like there, there's like, there's so many times where like, I, I like this song or I think this thing will be good at this moment or in this inflection in their voice. And like, I'll start it at there or, I'll punch in something else here, but sometimes I have to go into like the wave file and like clip it and then merge it. And then like really get the, <laughs> really get the drums in or something like, and like yeah. that to me is like the fun part is like creating that experience. And then when you listen to it and you have your heads down and you're, and you're closing your eyes and you're listening to that on the headphones and you're like, does that cl- like hit through? And then you're like, yes, it does. Uh, and then when you hear it, and then when you hear it, like other people around you hear it and they're like, yeah, man, I really like your music on the show. <laughs> like, I really like your thing on the thing. I'm like, thanks, man. They never like point out the thing that you worked on, whatever. But they always like, oh, I like that. How you did that? And it's like, yeah, it took me an hour. You don't tell them that part. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, not you know, you'd be both horrified and thrilled to to sort of work in the way that I'm working on this audio. So again, how many tracks do you be, use? How many tracks are you, do you have? Do you uh, use a lot of tracks? Well, so I got to break, I have to break the, um, I'll show you something here. So I have to break the, the whole project has to be broken into like, as many different scenes as there are. So like this is, this is a, yeah, this is a storyboard for the third episode. And so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, you know, I, I, I have conversations with these people. I, I sort of get a idea for how it is. They think about the world, what it is that they're doing. A lot of these people I'm meeting through Slim, all of them. I'm meeting through Slim. Um, Not necessarily introductions, but I met them because of the circle that Slim has. And uh, it's it's a combination of script writing for non actors, (laughs) which is not. You gotta hear. Uh, it's so funny. Work up, like try to get Slim to read off script, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he'll say he'll emphasize the or something. I'm like, that's that's definitely not how Slim talks. But we're running it because Slim is out the door already. He's out the studio. So and I'm not there to be like, nope, do it again. 
Um, and, and also I don't really want to do that. So I want to use like, I want to be very gentle in the way that I enter into people's lives, but I also want to be firm about, um, but I want to be firm about making sure that their story is heard the way that they want it to be, you know, and, and, um, so yeah, it's, it's just like, it is a really beautiful process. So I, of, of getting deeper, deep into people's lives, not having known them previously, um, working on the storyboard with, with them, you know, sending them pieces at a time, uh, and the thing kind of unfolds. This is the, we're trying to get this out every month, once a month. So this is thirty minutes of like high, heavily sound design yeah. story. I, I mean, it's it's a lot, but it's also it needs to be that that quick, you know. Yeah. There's there's something about I always talk about this at Plub Lab, but there's something about chasing greatness, yeah. chasing perfection, and like maybe coming up short, but you have to go and chase that. Like you have to have that level of. Um, of, of drive and that level of dedication. And that's what it takes to make great, you know, great art, great media, great. Anything is like that level. And uh, absolutely. Yeah. If you, if you don't have that, that drive and that, um, that, that level of tenacity, then um, why do it? <laughs> that's always been my thing. It's like, why do it? You know? Um, yeah. One of the, one of the things that you kind of, you brought up, we were talking about um, the part about the uh, about uh, working with Slim and, and the enunciation of the and stuff like that. I, I will tell you that one of the coolest things about working with a top tier talent is understanding like what your role is in, in that in that situation. Um, and for myself, like I've, I've come to realize like my whole job is to make that person um, a, a, a the the greatest pop possible representation through the through the lens or through the ears of car right it's like how do i make him the absolute best that i can possibly make him through my vision through my ears through everything like that like i need to get him or her to that level of of like um of that level of perfection on my side right like what i can control um, because mm -hmm. you can't control what they'll say or what they'll do, but you can't control like the, uh, the level of, uh, the level of detail that you're putting into everything that you're doing. Um, and that's what I've, I've learned with collaborating with people that are like really talented. <laughs> it's like, you just need to produce, right? Like you just need to produce at your highest level and that that's all you need to do. And when work within that framework and really great producers, can really um, put their put their finger and their thumbprint on things. Um, I believe. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, and one of the things that Slim sort of put me on to was this idea of producing other producers, and. That's kind of like what we're doing with the Bitcoin, Bitcoin and the Sovereign Rancher. That's kind of what we're doing every episode. Because every episode, I have to ask somebody to record some things for me. I have to ask them to say things that begin. You don't have to keep going with the script, but make sure you begin with, first, I just want to say how wonderful it is or hi, this is Anne. After that, go off, but keep it three minutes. <laughs> yeah, a lot <laughs> of direction. Sure, make right? sure you hit, <laughs> you know, make sure you hit this topic, this topic, mm -hmm. and this topic, uh, which are all topics that I have to feel out of them as I as I'm learning about them. You know, so I have to sort of like parse through this all the stuff that I have to ask the right questions in the beginning, and I have to pull out like these essential, interesting, te textural kind of things, stories that, that I can hear sounds happening in. Um, 
And it's just such a, it's, yeah, it's just such a beautiful process. And the goal that I'm sort of winding around is because it's a series. I mean, this thing could go on forever. I don't see this thing stopping. I mean, why not? This is, this is the decentralization of our food supply. How is that? <laughs> How do you call that end? Okay. Add a story. Yeah, it doesn't nah. end. Yeah, it, it just end. keeps going. It does. It's it a doesn't lifetime end. thing, yeah. And that's, that's, that's where, that's where us creator, new creator people come in because I think it's, this creator economy is not just a buzzword. I think it's truly, it's the decentralization of, of media, of, of knowledge, you know, it's, it's a becoming, reaching back to the, to the roots of things, a grassroots kind of way of of uh consuming media and you know it's it's our role to sort of it's our it's our role to dig to dig deep and and as people who are you know i mean this is a new form right so we're we're as people who are sort of leading this path on on the front lines if you don't want to if you don't like the word leader or something like that but you're on the front lines you're at avant-garde like it's our job to show people to, to help people become empowered by all this happening too, because it's kind of a lot to take in. A lot of people's lives are changing very, very quickly, especially within the beef initiative circles. I mean, their lives are changing like from unhealth to health. Like, I mean, it's unbelievable, you know, to now I get to work with some of these people and I get to, you know, I'll be working with a young man named Ronnie. Um, and he went from unhealth to health, very bad unhealth to health. And he's, he told me that he's always wanted to like be able to tell a story really well and to, you know, and now I'm working with him and he, he, he went, man, he went out and bought a, a field recorder and he's like, sent me like a 45 minute recording. I was like, that is awesome. I can't listen to 45 minutes worth of recordings, man. Just wait for this, you know, but, but it was this beautiful moment where it's, it's that thing that it is the, uh, you know, it's the sort of, it's like the gift that keeps giving, you know, it's, it's such a beautiful thing because slim enabled that in me. Slim was like, you can, you can see, you have this, this vision for this thing that I also have. So like, you don't need to be taught anything. You can like go and, you know, go make more of you because I went out and I found you and I made you like me. And now you have to make other people like us, you know, and it's, it's a great idea. (laughs) Yeah. There's something about uh, being able to like, um, I don't know, train up's the right word or like, uh, maybe like, um, assist in like, uh, another producer's like journey and like, uh, giving them the, the same like, um, uh, teachings that, that have taken you a lifetime, right? Like you can fast track a lot of the things that they would have had to go through. Uh, cause like there, dude, there was a time where like in my twenties where I just had to learn everything. And, and a lot of the, a lot of it was stumbling and like, and and even now I'm still learning, but it's 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 a uh, it's only very minimal at the at this point. It's like a, once you dial in your sound, you don't really have to mess with it, especially when you figured out what your sound is. But like I know I noticed like with some of these newer guys that I talk to and like I help train up and stuff, it's like um, it's uh it's it you're teaching them all you're teaching them a lot all at once, and they they have to have the the work ethic is probably the biggest thing is like the work ethic first and then the responsibility yeah. and the, for me, the other thing I look for besides work ethic and responsibility is more like, do they have that extra, that edge where they're trying to go after perfection? Like th- that's what I really look for in people is like, do they have that extra thing? It's like the work ethic responsibility. Those are great. But do you have that extra Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Do you do you do that? Do you do that extra exercise when you're already exhausted? Type of right. mentality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I, I, lo- I love that. I love that mentality. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, I really do love that mentality. Especially in the arts, right? Like in the arts, you don't, people don't talk about that in the arts. Like people will talk about that in sports or they'll talk about that in like business, but in the arts, no one ever talks about that. Like I never hear anybody talk about that in the arts, but like for me, I've always thought of it like that is, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, it's just that, that sense of grind, like that hustle that, um, but it is, I think it, it, it turns, into something a little bit more when when the grind is in line with like your spiritual growth and your mm-hmm. growth as a human being, you know, mm-hmm. like that grind is like, it's not just to make the best work. It's, it's to become like the best version of myself that I can become. And for me, it's like about constantly practicing that. Like I can't, man, the seed oils thing, when I went off the seed oil rabbit hole and I, and I stopped, you know, stopped eating seed oils. Like I will, you know, I I slip up every now and then, but I will not go out to get ice cream with my family. No, uh uh-uh. Like I don't want that sugar. I mean, that's a sugar example, but, 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 but what, that snacking for me represents is this unhinged, uh, you know, sort of get at whatever you desire and it's okay. It's going to be fine. Right. Like I can't be like that anymore. And that to me is a, is a very unintentional way of living everything. I want everything to be intentional and I want everything that I do to, to grow, to grow that, you know? Yeah. I can feel that, that, in, that, that intentionality to grow that yeah. intentionality. Yeah. Yeah. There's something about being intentional in your daily, in your daily life. Like, like for me, it's like waking up, being intentional about like praying in the morning. First thing it's like, I pray, thank God for Same. everything. Um, <clears throat> and then, um, you know, and then it's just like, put on some music and start jamming, man, <laughs> and, get, and get ready for work. Like, that's my routine is just like, wake up, pray, and then start jamming out to like, whatever I, awesome. have, I have listening to. And man, I'll be dancing, bro. I'll just be like dancing, <laughs> having a good time. Cause like, that's how life is, man. Life should be fun. Life should be enjoyable. My stepdad, he used to always like blast music. Uh, and he would blast like church music and then he would be like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> like, it's just like walking around and it's like, it's like not even Sunday. It's just like a regular day. And I'd be like, dude, what is going on, man? Like, just like turn it down or like turn yourself I down. It. But I realized why he did that. Like, uh, you know, um, like now I was, at, I was a young kid, but now I realized like, oh, he was happy that what he had created, you know, um, the family that he had, the, 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 he had, he had no reason to be unhappy. Right. And right. like for, <laughs> for me, that was always the biggest takeaway at the time. I didn't know what that was, but now I'm like, I'm kind of the, the same way. I'm like, yeah, this is amazing. I can't believe it. Yeah. What do you, what's your morning yeah. routine? What do you do? You listen to a lot of music. Um, you know what? It's really funny. Um, well, so I actually don't listen to a lot of music. My, again, like my purpose with that Puro Signal, it, it's all eighties. If if anybody hasn't heard it, it's um, it's all eight, pretty much all eighties house and hip hop, um, and disco, <laughs> and some soul music, uh, but kind of floats around that vibe. But the soulful yeah. stuff, you know, nice. I played it. I played the classics, man. Nice. Um, but uh, and, and it's all of that wrap, wrapped around um, Bitcoiner quotes and uh, stuff from podcasts. And um, so but I, I use all that music very purposefully. I don't know what's going on in my brain, but I could listen to like two seconds of the beginning, middle and end of a song be like, that's hot. Drop it. (laughs) 
<laughs> and every and then every show that so you know um between between you me and everybody who hears this i guess uh so i'm not here out scratching records or nothing like that again i'm like i'm like a storyteller through this stuff i'm i'm kind of like malcolm x over to like yelling the news <laughs> out kind of like you know it's like uh like the like the <laughs> the athon like all over the loudspeaker but it's me yelling out the news um and but i so i only really listen to like the beginning middle and ends as i'm putting it together and then at, after i put the songs in order and i got the the samples just right they're hitting at the right spot you know um i'll go back and i'll record like me kind of yelling I'll probably rock out with it for a little bit, but you know, if I'm like, eh, I kind of yell a lot back there, let's give it some time to just play the music. <laughs> I'll, I'll just skip right ahead. You know, it's really not even a big deal. I love music. Don't get me wrong. Like, of course I love sound, but, uh, it's my routine. I don't have a lot of music in my life, man. I pray a lot. Um, and I, and I, and I work, I work really hard. Um, but my routine in the morning uh, this is, it's just perfect. It's perfection. Nice. Um, I wake up, try to wake up around, um, five thirty six. pray. Um, and then I sort of get to work on some, maybe I'll read a little bit, to sort of get my mind going. Uh, you know, I'll read the Quran. I'm Muslim and, or I'll, start kind of storyboarding and thinking about some of the conversations I had, you know, the night before. Um, and three or four hours goes by. I've had a couple cups of coffee and I'm flowing and I'm like, ah, yes, you know, it's my most productive time. I'm like, Oh man, I just basically finished the whole episode in my head right now. This is <laughs> awesome, right? <laughs> Dude, same, right? God. It's, Doesn't it that, just hits yeah. so hard. <laughs> God damn. The beautiful part is that I'm off of the inspiration boat. I'm no longer the artist who needs inspiration to work. Nope. I don't need that. Because I'll tell you why. The rest of my morning goes like this. I take out some KNC cattle from the beef initiative. <laughs> Cole Bolton. I, Cole Bolton. I love Cowboy saying his Cole. name, dude. I love saying his name. I, I saw oh, him man. at ABC what two months he, ago. I was like, nice to meet you again, Cole Bolton. <laughs> I haven't. I haven't even shook the man's hand yet. Um, but he's a nice man. Man, he does. He does a. He does a heck of a job. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I was here. Let me really, I sidetracked you by saying Cole Bolton. What's the nah, nah. it's very what? much. A, yo, it's he doesn't. I think he does know. Uh, of course he knows. I don't think he knows knows. I don't think he knows that I know how oh. much his beef and how much his soil, how many minerals and nutrients are in that soil. Like the way that it's affecting my body i've never in my life felt i feel like a child again like an actual real life kiddo you know my energy is so pure so un it's so not debased yeah and I, i'll tell you I, by 9 30 in the morning i got the girl fired up i got the top sirloin or merlot or he gives me some crazy cuts. I don't know if he's giving everybody the cuts. I like to think I'm special. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I think I'm special, but, uh, and, and I'll have between half to a pound, half pound to a pound of steak or burger. But every morning, every morning I make sure. And it's become so regimented that if I add a single egg or add a single sweet potato or add a single anything i know how long that piece of food allowed me to stay unhungry it's yeah. abs it's absolutely mind blowing i've like it's it's like i've achieved nutritional perfection or something <laughs> and all i did was start eating steak every morning at at 9:30 and 
So 9.30 a.m., I'm eating a steak. Um, I'll go off to work. A couple hours go by. Everybody's, ah, oh, I'm so hungry. Oh, I got to stop working. <laughs> and I'm like over here doing push-ups, like with doing everything by myself, you know, not really. But, but I mean, that's the energy that I have. And I'll get off of work eight hours later. And I'll go do CrossFit and I still haven't. Oh, wow. You do CrossFit too, June? Yeah. Yeah. I just, that's something I started about four months ago. Basically when I switched my diet, it all happened at the same time. Um, so yeah, but it's, it's, it's amazing. If I add or remove just an egg, I know how long that egg took me in a day. And it's not just about like, Oh, I'm not hungry during the day, but I'm kind of all like, you know, all kind of slow or or, or confused or like all of the things that I was before I switched over to the Bitcoin way, you know, which was, you know, I've never been a dumb guy, but I mean, it's just the la- the level of clarity that I have now makes me think that I must have been stupid before. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's a journey. No, yeah, it's a journey. As, yeah, I'm just I'm just joking. I like to be harsh on myself that way, like yeah. in a in a in a go- in a goofy way, just to yeah. to you know. It's a to journey. Pu- to push- I, I've I've come to realize, like in the Bitcoin space, it's uh, we're all we're all learning all the time, and then once you get to you know, once you've been in for a while, and then you kind of know, but. Um, even some of the old, old OGs are still, so they're still learning too. So I would just yeah, show yourself grace, June. You're doing a great job. Thanks, man. Where, where are you out of? Are you out of Texas or where are you out of? I'm, I'm in Florida, man. Oh yeah. You're I'm, Florida? I'm originally, I'm originally oh, from wow. Philly. Oh, so you get KNC cattle out there in Florida. <laughs> Whoa. I didn't know they were delivering Yo, out there now. It's, serious it's serious i it's i can't believe i'm blessed to eat this texas beef yeah it's that central Um, texas grass then yeah it's like it's down i don't know if it's still the same place but it's over here off of uh what 70 71 um the ranch i don't know the exact road me and kyle used to go there all the time um earlier this year and last year but um yeah, man, I don't, yeah, have, I, yeah, it's been a minute since I've had KNC cattle. It's been a minute. I've been, yeah, I've been, I've been it's been a bear so market. Special. So I've been, uh, been just eating tacos. That's all I can afford right now is like tacos and taking back so, to a taco pleb diet. So, so, um, yeah, so I, I think I came just a little bit after the taco pleb diet was, was popular. <laughs> well, I use, I, I use, I use KNC cattle beef stew meat. Hopefully Cole's not listening to this, but uh, dude, that beef stew meat, put that in tacos, bro. God, Ooh. hopefully you never raise those prices. Um, really? Okay. I, yeah, no one even knows. Thing. No one even knows. <laughs> but uh, that beef stew meat, if you you can like you can even because if they're like thick, right? You can even cut it up even slimmer, and that that'll make you so many tacos in a week. Um, yeah, I'll just get the beef stew meat. That's that's amazing. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I just get the uh, I just get like the 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 first box that's listed on the beef box page. I don't get the, the platinum, but it's like the one the standard, oh, wow. whatever it is. But uh, eighteen pounds of wow, you know, you get you get five five pounds of uh, ground beef, and the rest, you know, these awesome awesome cuts that I've never even knew about. Which which I guess that that is due to this is something i'm learning about uh you know i i I try to as i'm making this documentary and everything and as i as i work with slim and i try to always remind people that like i am on this journey of health i just got here you know i just happen to be close to the source and so and i happen to be good at talking about it um so what do you what what else are you working on are you just doing the the slim stuff right now got any other products i mean that's that's my that's my main that's my main thing. So it's it's uh with Slim, it's Bitcoin and the Sovereign Rancher. Um that's that's my main project with him. And we're about to put out the third episode. Um we started this maybe three months ago. And then um and we all we all work together, you know, sort of 
on, on, on various, various activities, whatever happens to come up. The events are a big thing. And then the other thing that I'm working on is, is that Piero signal is, uh, you know, is my other sound project. Um, you know, and so I, I sort of talked about that a little bit earlier and that, man, I did a, I did a, a, a custom mix for Pleb Minor Month. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Bard Minor hit me up and, you know, he was like, Man, I've been listening to this. This is so awesome. All this music. I can't believe you play this stuff. Like, I haven't heard this forever. And can you do a, a Pleb Modern Month episode? And, or he didn't ask to do an episode. He just asked if I could do something. Uh-huh. You know, so I was like, he, you know, he was like, just let me know what you want for it. And I was like, eh, you know, value for value. Let's, let's play this out. Let's really play this out, you know. Um, and, Man, thank God I did because it was it. I, I t- what I did was because I was doing a value for value. I'm like, well, I'm a I'm a really busy person. I have a job, a fiat job, um, and then I have the Bitcoin and Duck and the Sovereign Rancher, which is the serious project. Mm-hmm. I can't possibly take that pure signal more seriously than Bitcoin and the Sovereign Rancher. Yeah, never gonna. They just you know, um, and. Um, so, so, you know, I, I, I have to keep, I have to, I have to keep, uh, keep that in mind as I, as I sort of work on all this stuff. Um, yeah. get your priorities first and then, yeah, yeah, I gotta, yeah, I gotta keep the priorities straight, but, but with, with that show, you know, with, with, with the, the Pled Minor Month episode, it became I just turned it into a, 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 you know, volume 21, I think it was. Nice. So that's how I sort of call them volumes. They're like mixtapes. They're like Bitcoin yeah. mixtapes. That's awesome. <laughs> so I was like, I can't possibly do all this stuff and prioritize Bitcoin and Sovereign Rancher and do this mm-hmm. custom extra, extra thing. So value for value, I'm just going to make it an episode of mine. Yeah. We're going to do it like that. And I'm just going to take samples from all their podcasts and, you know, I'm just going to do what I do. And, um, man, they took that Puro signal to number one on fountain. I was like, Oh my goodness gracious. That is incredible. Yeah. I like, you know, they, it, it pumped like, I got like 300 listens in two days or something. That's amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. and, and it's just house music, right? And it's all these Bitcoiners flocking to it and it's pushing <laughs> it up. Adam, Adam Curry gets wind of it and he samples it for his show. And he's like, yo, this guy is like, what? And where did he come from? This guy is on something. <laughs> you know, if you haven't heard it, it's me. It's a lot of yelling, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to, it's good to have a, a quality group of Bitcoiners who who listen uh to podcasts and we all kind of listen to our to our, our our favorites and then we also dive into everybody else's uh i'm a big fan of like uh the slim stuff and then of course i love tftc and rhr but i also love like i love uh jose's podcast a lot i listen to that a lot um, yeah there's just so many podcasts that i can i dive into i like listening to uh Vallis's podcast too um yeah there's so many there's so many at this point mary's another one i've been listening to she uh, she does a bit now podcast listen to that one is that um, the is that the gate the gaming yeah yeah the gaming one yeah oh, and then yeah, there's I a actually just i yeah, just met mary yeah, yeah and then there's the uh and then one of my new favorite podcasts is from the ordinals guy uh it's the uh hell money pod that's one of my new favorite ones and then of course citadel too right like there's so many good ones uh, there, out there. There are. I wish that I had more time to listen to to stuff. So I came up, as most people, I came up with Bitcoin listening to all these podcasts that you just named. Um, I only listen uh, to Peter. Sorry, Peter. I only listen to his podcast whenever like one of my friends are on. <laughs> I, never, I never listen to that one. Are you oh, Pete, uh, McCormick? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody, everybody. I mean, he he gets all the big hitters, you know. Yeah, every once in a while, like I'll be like, "Oh, Sahil's on." I go listen to that. 
Yeah, or like John Pomp gets the big gets great. Oh, dude, I haven't too, listened to Pomp I mean? in like years, dude. I haven't listened to yeah. him in years. Yeah. Well, I came up listening to to Marty was yeah. like when I first got into big. Same. Like, yeah. Really, yeah, Marty was like, you know, what's up, freaks? Like, <laughs> <laughs> spon- sponsored by the motherfucking Kesher. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> and I just thought that was super funny when I found out he was from Philly. I was like, what? Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, but um, but yeah, yeah. I don't get a chance to listen to to them as much as I, as I could. And so I'm, you know, I usually, I, you know where I fit them in, you know where I fit them in now? Cause where? I'll play music in the morning. I usually fit them in like, uh, either on the way to work or on the way home. And then I just like, I just put them in like a, a, a like a list. Uh, and then it just like, eventually over the course of like, uh, what a week or two, it, I'll go through all of them you know because mm. i'll just listen to him then and then but everywhere else i listen to music yeah you know yeah. uh i've also been you know I, i'm closer to my family now that i'm down here in florida and uh i i think i spend like i spend time with with them often i've always like had podcasts music or something else but it was one that or the other mm-hmm. uh so socializing like what i do with my family um you know that's that's been like my when i'm not working that's what i like that's why i came here you know yeah. is to like be closer to my family um and so that's sort of take it, taking the place of the music and the podcast but but i love all that stuff and so that's why i want to ha- like that's why that pure signal is also super important for me because it allows me to stay in in tune with everything that's going on sometimes you know i really wish people would post more uh preview trailer videos or clips from podcasts on twitter because it's so easy for me to just scroll through the twitter feed oh Oh, there's a video playing (laughs) yeah i should probably do that too i don't know why i don't do that yeah uh i just for for my own benefit alone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was going to have this idea. Yeah. I want to run it by you since we're talking about podcasts. I have this idea for a podcast. Maybe somebody will go do it. So feel free to if somebody hears this idea. Um, I think it would be cool. And I think it's probably been done. I'm sure somebody's done it. But th- tell me what you think about this idea. I think it would be cool to do a day in the life podcast where it just like you, you go record a or maybe you just have them put a mic on whoever the personality is and then it they just have that mic on them the whole day and it just records right and then you take that audio and then you go and make a whole episode out of it whether it's like a two hour three hour episode but wouldn't that be so cool like imagine having a day in the life of like name whoever you want and then like the next week it's a day in the life of name whoever you want uh, do you know what i mean? I like that and then you yeah, can literally like you, those those they have these little uh, i think they're task them the task cams they're like this big they sound for like 30 40 bucks you could literally just ship it to whoever's gonna do it and then they can yeah. ship it back to you and then you have yep. like this day in the life of a, of a bitcoiner podcast and it's just like an epic one because then you could inter intertwine all these soundscapes and then like all this music and then and then it's like maybe they record a you know, you get that goodness of like whoa like I didn't realize they were this busy or they were they were doing this or oh that recorded yeah. that when they were doing like to, imagine today like we would have had a day in the life podcast of like CZ right <laughs> like what that would have been like damn that would have been an epic like podcast to hear the whole day of um, yeah. do you know what I mean like isn't that a great idea it is a great idea. I mean, that's that's kind of like what what I do. Not a whole day, but you know, slim, slim. Uh, I still haven't used this recording in any of the episodes, um, so it'll it'll come up eventually. But slim recorded himself going to a farmer's market back when we first started working together, and I mean, he sent me back a two hour recording of just everything going that just, you yeah, know, that's perfect. Like something like yeah. that, but imagine yeah, having yeah. like that multiple times during the day. And then just, like you having to do that. It's like, it's a massive editing job, but you have to go and find that's those a, nuggets. So that's, and then, and then, and then weave a story together. Like, you know, see, I feel like it's not as mass. So that's what I'm learning 
with the storyboarding process with this because it can be a massive undertaking. I mean, okay, we got four characters, each living four different lives, and we have to pull a story out of all four characters that, where did they line up? Yeah, you might have too many characters. (laughs) Not at all. Not too many characters at all. No, because you can have them interact. (laughs) Oh, yeah, that's Um, true. The the stories can cross over. But but what I was getting at was that that all comes down to the planning that happens in the storyboarding process, which is Uh something I'm learning. I never storyboarded anything, really. But it, it became necessary. It was like, oh, wow. I started the first episode with Slim and I was like, oh my gosh, it's so good. Yeah. I can't stop now. I can't stop now. I have to keep going. And I was like, oh boy, I hope I can do this. Yeah. And so, so it was like, okay, not, I hope I can do this. I'm going to go ahead and do this thing. And I'm going to be, you know, Mr. Uh, NBC, ABC, (laughs) <laughs> Mr. Producer, I'm becoming producer, you know, like I, I got those. Nice. Um, and, but yeah, the storyboard and the preparation part is just so crucial to capturing the improvisation of every day uh, of life as it's lived, because you can, what I think we all have learned is that we all share the same paths to like it all takes steps to get to places. It always takes a step. And, and we all share certain common things, the money and the food, you know, like those are two things that, and we all have to start. Where's the food start? Probably at the grocery store. So that's something that, yeah, I mean, you could have 16 characters in a, in an episode. I mean, it's all just, they're all going to the same place, get talking to the same type of butcher who doesn't know where their food's coming from. He doesn't know where the, his meat's coming from. Uh, or yeah. if he's, or if he's smart, he's been to the processing center. I've been to the processing center. That's mm-hmm. American beef. Uh, all right, bro. Where does the beef come from before the processing center? Brazil, sir. <laughs> do you, <laughs> na- do you do there. narration too, as well? Like, uh, to introduce these characters that are coming in. Cause I would imagine yeah. if you have so many different voices, uh, you have at a certain, to. after a you certain have point, to. it would, it would just get too bombarding. You wouldn't be able to tell who's who or what's, what's what. Cause it's not visual, right? So. No, it's not visual. Uh, no. Nah, so it started out with slim. Uh, cause it was right before slim just went right before we built this whole thing that operates around all the stuff that slim does. Uh, so that slim doesn't have to do all the stuff that we're doing, <laughs> you know? Um, you know, as, as soon as, as soon as, as uh, we, we did that first episode, Slim got busy. And then the second episode, I was like, man, uh, we're doing the Rise of the Heritage Woman because we just had the Heritage Woman panel um, at the Georgia event, which we had back in September. And so I'm trying to follow the storyline that Slim is creating, that we're all building here. So I'm just trying to capture the stories as they're happening. And... We get to the second episode and Slim's busy at this point. <laughs> he doesn't have time to sit here and work on a script or, you know, all the stuff that we talked a bunch about before. Now it was just me and, you know, this next episode. So I stepped in after I realized, like, we're not going to be able to wing, you know, not wing it, but running. I like to call it running and gunning. Um, but we're not going to be able to really run and gun it with Slim like this because he just doesn't. I mean, he's too busy to do this. You know, he's got. Let's move, let's move this forward. So I stepped in and I did the narration for the second episode. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, yeah. Which which was a challenge because I don't really, I didn't necessarily like the sound of my voice. I was like, oh my god, this is like went from Texas Slim to like who the f is this guy talking? You know. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sitting here like this is okay. Let's let's go. Yeah. Um, but I, but I got my voice, you know, there's a certain way you could hold, you could talk into a microphone a certain way and really capture it. What kind of mic do you use? Um, uh, we were just using, um, man, we were running and gunning, like I said, but we were just using a field recorder that, um, oh, okay. The, yeah. The zoom. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Yeah. If you get the, yeah, if just, you get the big thing on it, the, the big muff thing on it, it you can record pretty yeah, good. Yeah. You just get yourself in a small and, room and then you clean up a lot in post too, right? So Yeah. Clean it yeah. up. Um so 
so that was the the second episode and i'm like well that's interesting it's like i'm just following patterns here it's kind of, it's the proof of work model it's like i'm just following this thing foot step by step seeing mm-hmm. where this is going right uh but i like that's this okay now there's a different narrator in the second episode the third episode um we have ty jackson as the narrator and ty jackson's from worldview wellness um uh, you know, she has an amazing voice. She works with the beef initiative. Um, and now she's the narrator of this one. The, the fourth episode, which is in the process of, uh, we're starting it just now. Um, uh, it's going to be between Ty continuing the narration and, and Ronnie seeing where Ronnie, how Ronnie likes to speak and how he can carry his voice. But we're all just playing, or we're playing, seeing where, where the where the thing goes, and sort of whose voice shines for that particular, yeah, section. Yeah, it's 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 a really beautiful process. That's man. good, man. I'm glad that you're having a good time. Sounds like you're having a good time doing it. That's that's all that matters at the end of the day. Is if is if uh, the level of work and the if you're having fun, right? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, and, and I mean not just about having fun, but about like feeling like I went out there. Like I was like kind of feeling the other day I was pretty tired. I had worked all day and, but I, I I had to get started. I wanted to talk to, to Ronnie about his story and sort of see where, where we could go with that. Um, and I, and I called him at first I was going to be like, "Uh, you know what? Let me just give him a call tomorrow. But I was like, no, no, I need to get up and I need to like change the world. Right. Like that's the mentality. It's like, and, and this phone call that I'm going to make, I'm going to have a conversation with this, with this young man who's going to tell me his story. He's going to tell his story to somebody he hasn't told his story to before. And that's changing the world. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You know? Nice. Well, I hope you go change the world uh, going forward. You're already doing it. Just keep doing it. Uh, I got to bounce because I got a I got a meeting here at seven. But um, thanks for coming on the show, Jen. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, Carlos. Man, it was a great conversation. I hope we could do it again. Yeah, absolutely. Whenever you want, man. Just hit me up. We'll do it again. There's more. There's more we can talk about for sure. There's a lot there's a lot more we could talk about and um and i and i think that our love for sound like will cross paths at some point yeah i'm always down to assist in uh sound making stuff you know fitting in the window that's what it is these days so much opportunity so many things to do it's just like what what's the most important like the priority thing we're talking about like what's the most prioritized thing that you could be doing and what has the most impact intentionality right intentionality love it